Call the meeting to order. Roll call. Mayor Calvin. Here. Council Member Christensen. Here. Plowman. Here. Nelson. Here. Johnson. Here. Amon. Here. Dockin. Here. Anderson. Here. Faggerly. Here. Nine present, zero absent. Well, stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Just remind everybody that if you've got your cell phone with you, if you just silence your cell phone, that'd be appreciated uh, for tonight's meeting. Are there any proposed additions or deletions to the agenda? Hearing none, I have one I'd like to add. In front of you, you have an appointment uh, for the consent agenda of an at-large member to the Economic Development Commission Operations Board. And I would like to recommend Kelly Tawersha. Uh, we do have his uh, bio there for you to see. Uh, his uh, family has long owned businesses here in town. I'm aware that he does live out on Green Lake, but it's the at-large position, and that position rotates between the city and the county, and uh, this time it is uh, time for the city to appoint that. So I'd recommend Kelly Tawersha. I have spoke with him, and I've also spoken with Steve Rehnquist, and uh, so I'd ask to add that to the consent items. And then additionally, I would ask our fire chief to make some comments about the gas leak on 15th Street uh, that happened over the last week. Just uh, if you're okay with that, we'll do that at the end of the meeting, if that's okay with you. Okay. Uh, so I'll move to approve the consent items, Mr. Mayor. Second. Motion been made and seconded to approve the consent items with the one addition. Mr. Mayor. Council uh, Member Amon. Uh, th thank you. I. Um Due to our conflict of interest policy that we passed, I, my wife and I uh, were at the Planning Commission on a replat for some land we own, so therefore I will be abstaining after talking with Robert Scott on, um, on that portion of the minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Additional comments? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Pull same sign. Okay, scheduled hearing, Small Cities de Development Program. City Administrator Stevens. Yes, uh, Ms. Jill Binks is here on behalf of the uh, Candy Ohio County HRA, and she will be um, leading us through the hearing. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Uh, tonight we're uh, <coughs> having a public hearing uh, to receive public input and comment on expanding the target area of the 2012 Small Cities Development Program area <coughs> for rental rehab activities. Um, in 2013, Minnesota Housing granted uh, tax credits to the Wilmer HRA to do a rehab project at Highland Apartments. And at that time, Minnesota Housing consults with DEED um, and they uh, collaborate on funding for projects they fund. And at that time, DEED requested that small cities development program funds be used on the Highland Rehab Project. Highland was not originally part of the target area and so that's the reason for having the, the public hearing. Okay, any other comments from the public? Seeing and hearing none, I'll bring it to the council table. Mr. Mayor. Council Member Fagerly. I'll make a motion to approve the Small Cities Development Program uh, grant and extension and target area expansion. Second. The uh, resolution has been uh, introduced and has been seconded. Kevin, is this a roll call? Um, it is not a. It is not a resolution unless you, in later required. No. Okay. Simple motion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, Jill, for that uh, presentation. And next, we'll have the city council open forum. Did we have anybody sign up for open forum? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Bob Score has signed up. Okay, Bob. Bob, we do have the three-minute timer that you'll see in front of you tonight, and uh, we ask you to follow that uh, uh, procedure. Yes, sir. Um, you know, Bob scores 617 Southwest 14th Street. I'm really proud to be the first speaker contestant on the new Beat the Clock Open Forum. 
So on that, I better get going here because I'm on the clock. <laughs> I just want to give a couple of definitions <clears throat> again because we seem to forget. One, I want to give the definition for city council. A municipal body having legislative and administrative powers, ordinances, and appropriating funds. It is a legislative body that governs a city, town, municipality, or local government area. The reason I bring that up is I hear this micromanaging city council tries to do. By this, I have every power to do it. <laughs> the other word I need to uh, talk on is respect. On a practical level, respect includes taking someone's feelings, needs, thoughts, ideas, wishes, and preferences into consideration. It means taking all of these seriously and giving them worth and value. In fact, giving someone respect seems similar to valuing them and their thoughts, feelings, etc. It also includes, includes acknowledging them, listening to them, being truthful with them, and accepting their individuality and their idiosyncrasies. Not real hard to figure out. It seems like we have a little lack of respect in a lot of areas. That's why I brought it up. So I just have one uh, little um, quote to say here. It says, a government that robs Peter to pay Paul can always depend on the support of Paul. George Bernard Shaw. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? No, sir. Okay, thank you. We're going to the next item on the agenda, which is the Wilmer Fire Department Oath of Office. Chief Hendrickson. <clears throat> Good evening, Mayor Kelvin and members of council. Uh, tonight, I have the privilege of introducing four of the Wilmer Fire Department's probationary members who have completed their probationary period. S service before self, these three words speak volumes about one's personal beliefs, decision-making, and commitment to a specific cause. In some cases, they're attached to a tragic event or an individual as a matter of reverence. But in every case, they represent the highest level of commitment that an organization can ask of an individual or a team. Much like those in the military, upon entering the fire service, we all take an oath to uphold the core values of the organization we serve. We agree to protect our respective communities in the most effective and efficient manner possible. We agree to represent our department and our city leaders as professionals. We agree to make decisions and take actions that are reflective of departmental policies and procedures. And we agree to use the resources provided, coupled with the training and education we've received to provide the highest level of protection possible to our citizens. And when necessary, take calculated risk to save the lives and protect property. Over the last year, each of the four firefighters that will be coming up before you have completed over 130 hours of Fire 1 and Fire 2 training along with hazardous materials. This number in and of itself may seem insignificant, yet with all the demands of each firefighter's personal life, I believe that this is not insignificant and should be recognized in a public forum. Each of the firefighters being recognized this evening, on average, have worked 415 hours attending fire calls and training over the last year uh, in order to be uh, operationally effective on the scene of an incident. I believe in today's society, this is a sacrifice not only for the new firefighter, but a huge sacrifice for the firefighter's family. As a firefighter, many birthdays and holiday celebrations are missed because of the commitment each firefighter has made to service before self. Therefore, I would also like to recognize each firefighter's family and thank them for their support. I will now administer the oath of office for our new firefighters. As I call your name, please come and stand before me and face me, please. Nick Baker. Caitlin Braybender. Travis Dickerson. Nick Crone. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and of the state of Minnesota and faithfully discharge the duties of the firefighter for the city of Wilmer and the county of Candy, Ohio and the state of Minnesota to the best of my judgment and ability. As a firefighter for the city of Wilmer, 
I accept this oath and hereby de dedicate my fire service career to the protection of lives and property and commit to service before self. So help me God. This evening, uh, the following people are coming up and pinning uh, their significant other or maybe their son or daughter's uh, badge this evening. Uh, Nick Baker, uh, his father, Tom Baker, will be um, putting his badge on this evening. If you would come forward, please. This evening, Caitlin Braybender, uh, her father, Lyle Braybender, will be uh, pinning the badge on this evening. Travis Dickerson, uh, his wife's Thea, will be placing the badge on this evening. Last but not least, uh, Nick Crone, Nick's father, Dave Crone, will be pinning the badge on this evening. very much sir thank you very much congratulations mayor council thank you thank you on behalf of the mayor and council I want to thank you for taking your oath of office also going through your 130 plus hours of training over 400 hours of responding on calls and, and uh, other things that you've given to our community um, I personally know the sacrifices that you will make 
And uh, I entrust uh, in Chief Hendrickson's hands, you guys, uh, to do a great job for our community. So we're very proud of you. Uh, today is the start of a great career for you. You will do fabulous, and you have an excellent department to work alongside having served there for over 12 years. So thank you very much. Any council members? Want to Okay, thank you very much. Um, you guys can stick around as long as you wish. Um, we've got a few more things on the agenda. I'll be giving my state of the <laughs> city address. Um, it appears to me the fire chief, the firefighters have heard enough of what I've had to say, so. Um, but anyways, um, but uh, yeah, feel free. So thanks, Chief Hendrickson. This time I'll do my uh, state of the city address. Tonight, as I deliver my first State of the City address, I look back over a year of change at the city and also these chambers this year. Like many organizations, we are transitioning with our staff and losing some of our institutional knowledge along the way. Of course, this, all, this has also brought us an opportunity for new staff to join our organization, bringing new perspectives and new talents to our community. We have also introduced youth to our council ta ta table Welcome Council Member Plowman, again. I personally look forward to your insight and wisdom as we embrace younger thoughts in our decision-making process. Over the past several years, I've attended a number of council meetings and I believe that gives me an advantage to hit the ground running rather than trying to play catch up and learning the issues Wilmer faces. I also attended council meetings for over 13 years as a department director and now I can see both sides of the issues we face. First of all, I want to speak a little bit about 2014 before I talk about 2015. Last year, the City of Wilmer grew its tax base in residential housing, adding 14 new housing units with an added tax capacity of $4.3 million. Its commercial and industrial tax capacity also saw an increase by over $47 million. This includes projects such as, such as Bethesda's campus expansion, $17.5 million, Genio Turkey Store's corporate expansion, $6 million, MnDOT office remodel and update, $6 million, and over 21 new businesses opened in our community within the last year, including Aldi's, Hardee's, and Taco Bell. We also saw Relco do a major expansion uh, in the industrial park. We should celebrate the increased tax base and work to build on this for 2015. We are fortunate to serve as a regional center for West Central Minnesota. We are blessed with Rice Hospital and strong medical clinics in ACMC and Family Practice Medical Group, all of whom are exploring new ways to work more closely together in this challenging healthcare climate. This also includes expanding physician specialties and hospital coverage. Contracts were awarded to complete infrastructure in our industrial park, add hiking and biking trails, and we started our Western Interceptor and Lakeland Drive sewer projects. Just under one quarter mile of roads were constructed last year, and for 2015, we are planning on over 1.25 miles of reconstruction. We all recognize the need to catch up on our street maintenance. Our community saw some wonderful recognition outside of the region with the crowning of Laura Swartz as Aquatennial Queen and the Light of the World display recognized as best in Minnesota. Also in the past year, we saw hundreds of citizens become engaged in our community's future through Vision 2040. Citizen efforts led to our first ever Movies in the Park, the launch of two leadership programs, Vision 2040 Leadership and We Lead. Citizens are still working on a dog park, affordable housing, diversity, supporting our downtown, and many more additional projects. The four focus areas of Vision 2040 are leadership development, welcoming newcomers, developing more things to do, and improving the economic vibrancy of the region. These are unquestionably solid goals for this council and mayor to support. Next, I'd like to, I've identified a few areas that are important to me in the coming year. First, I want to improve how we work as a city council. The public expects their elected officials to get their work done, have dedicated employees, and serve the public. 
So the question is, how do we develop a leadership team and develop trust in our elected body? We work together and stop, stop holding grudges. I've been working with City Administrator Stevens to hold a retreat in the near future so we can have these frank conversations. A citizen a few days ago told me, Marv, deal with the elephant in the room first and then you can get on to the real business at hand. <coughs> I am committed to working as a team starting today and we all have a new opportunity to do the same. We have to stop blaming our past, set concrete goals on our future and get after it. Secondly, I want to hang our Wilmer's open for business sign and make it real. There are models for, for us to follow to improve the business climate here in Wilmer. One only needs to look at Shakopee and see what they did. A once empty downtown, retail spaces now have waiting lists for occupants. Why is that? Because their council developed a policy and allowed their staff to recruit accordingly. If projects are developed based on good council policy, there should be little room for criticism when a project reaches the final decision process. We have our tools in the toolbox, so now let's, staff, let's allow staff to use them. We are the major economic engine in West Central Minnesota, and our industrial park is ready for expansion and new business. I will welcome all new jobs and am willing to visit with any and all industry or business that wants to locate here in Wilmer. We also need to embrace our local chamber and partner with them again. Growing existing industry and business will be the key to job growth in our future. We need to continue to support the Railroad Y project and work to get a rail spur into our industrial park. We also must support filling the gap on Highway 23 so we have four lanes between Wilmer and St. Cloud. Third, I am looking forward to receiving the final report and recommendation for the master park plan in February. I want us to support this plan and see how this can be added to our overall capital planning. Having the majority of our park equipment exceeding 20 years in useful life is unacceptable in my opinion and that also has been stated from this council chamber. We need to develop a plan that will encourage younger people to locate in our area. Having a community that understands investing in our future makes sense and is something that we should all embrace. Fourth, we need responsible budgeting. Wilmer has been f fiscally conservative for many years and we're in a strong financial position today. We can pay the bills and keep the doors open. But my question is, is that what we want? To just keep the doors open? We have delayed infrastructure improvements at the expense of the bottom line. With budget shifts taken last year, we depleted RAC 8 funds, transferred unspent capital, spent down reserves, borrowed from the Public Investment Revolving Fund, and decreased our insurance reserve fund to only cover a portion of the required improvements needed at the auditorium. Those actions will have a negative impact on budgets for many years to come. The levy increase increase of $250,000 for 2015 is recommended to repay the PIR fund, yet that replacement takes $250,000 away from new projects. <clears throat> the repayment of the industrial or the insurance fund will take thirty dollars to $40,000 annually away from our general fund. The capital reserve fund will not be replenished per the adopted 2015 budget. These types of decisions will challenge us as we move forward to develop our 2016 budget Find the money is the saying I've heard repeatedly. We must budget responsibly for today and for our future. We must recognize the cost and value of providing quality services to the public. Finally, as we look forward, we need to remember that staff vacancies and staff turnover are not necessarily a sign of a healthy city. We need to review our organizational chart, compensation plan, and our employee benefit plan. I will recommend hiring a full-time human resource director to assist our city administrator. Our goal, our organization is too large to continue without the management structure in place for one of our most important assets, our employees. I was elected on the platform of vision, leadership and collaboration. It is my intent to live up to what I told the voters that I would do and I hope everyone here this evening is willing to commit to assisting our staff and community as well. We have a great community and I look forward to serving as your mayor and I will do my part to make Wilmer a better place to live, work, and raise a family. Thank you. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda is the consideration of the city auditorium renovation change order number three. Kevin Hellady. 
Mayor Calvin, members of the council, you have before you a document uh, detailing various projects inside change order number three. There are seven subsections and I'll go through them one at a time. The first one we'll have up on the screen, we have a firing range uh, additional work to relocate the shooting lane target brace. Uh, this is on the floor. This is or was uh, at the base of the deceleration chambers and the cables of all 10 lanes are uh, hooked on the ceiling and of course that brings the target they're shooting at to whatever distance they cable back to and it was not in the contract to move that. The new renovation has a steel wall in its place uh, coated with two inches of uh, black rubber and then a uh, block wall before that and so we need to move this 19 or 20 inches forward and the cost is listed there at 4743 for that change order. 3B, in the detailing of the electrical panel, it was read that the panel was a 600 amp service and unfortunately it was mislabeled and the contractor purchased a new uh, electrical box that came with a 600 amp breaker and a 175 amp breaker. The moment they hooked it up, they realized that with 400 amp service, that breaker will not work and unfortunately we can't um, take, give it back. So we own a 600 amp breaker. We obviously have a change order to purchase the 400 amp breaker. We are dealing with our uh, electrician at the wastewater treatment plant to see if they could use it in the future and if not we will talk with the uh, staff members at the Wilmer Municipal Utilities. So we have bought an extra uh, asset here I guess. The third one is uh, removal of the fans in the upper northeast and southeast corners of the gym. That was never original equipment up there. There's a two by four plywood wall in each corner. Those fans that were moving air around are no longer needed and it was staff's recommendation to remove them back to the original design. Uh, D is just a small patching of the existing uh, range ceiling baffle. That was a tiny little $300 adjustment. Four, and we'll put it up on the screen, or five, I guess, we'll put it up on the screen. That's always been a problem, and we're recommending correcting that now. This is in the lane 10 on the south side of the uh, 10 lane shooting range. Maybe it sticks out more with the black rubber on the walls now, but uh, that shot is taken almost in the shooting position of range uh, lane 10. And the fluorescent light up there on a three-foot lane is about two feet of unprotected uh, metal. It doesn't go all the way to the wall. And now with the black baffle, which is also rubber, uh, that light kind of protrudes into the eye, but the whole, whole fluorescent light system is unprotected to any stray bullets. And uh, it's recommended that we extend the metal to the south wall and cover that with two inches uh, black rubber also. 3F, the support pillar in the middle uh, has been designed to have one and a half feet of black rubber block stacked in front of it to protect bullets from hitting the support pillar. <coughs> and we believe it cuts too much of the lane off and we're recommending that they reduce that to one block and strap it to the pillar and gives an additional uh, 12 inches or six on each side of those two shooting lanes. That is a zero dollar change. 3G, there's additional framing and blocking in the basement hallway. The, the ceiling grid had to go through there right when you come to the bottom of the steps um, from the old mechanical room 
to the left uh, toward the gun range. That whole area there is uh, needing some additional ceiling grid to make everything uh, frame properly, and that's $800. Then one of the larger ones, 3H, uh, changes to the air handling equipment in the shop drawings had some additional electrical work. There was about $5,000 worth of additional electrical work, but some of the electrical uh, inventory and wires that were there were credited back that could be used so that all the air handling equipment, all three units, are properly wired. It is staff's recommendation that we accept change order number three. All of those costs total $15,321. That brings the, the new contract sum to 781221 We also listed there the contingency amount remaining for this project. It is nearing completion, but we are only down to $37,179 left in that contingency fund. Having said all that, Mr. Mayor, it is staff's recommendation to adopt a resolution approving change order number three. I'll move staff's recommendation. Motion second. been made and seconded to approve staff's recommendation. Discussion? I didn't hear a second, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Second. Mm -hmm. uh, um, okay. Councilmember Christensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, are there any other <clears throat> potential over, overruns that we know of, or, uh, or is this pretty much? We know of one, more of one more coming, as the lower floor is now a large maintenance room. And as you walk straight down the basement to the last thing, there are no doors protecting that. There used to be a little gate there, but the staff are recommending, and we will be getting a cost to have a double locked door there so that the public does not go in the maintenance room. Your best guess of what a double door, steel door, with lock on it might be 2,500, I, I don't know, but we know that's coming because we're gonna recommend protecting that room uh, from the wandering public. They don't need to be in the maintenance room. So we're, we're getting down though to uh, where there shouldn't be too many more. Um, we run into. That's the only the other one we really know of at this point. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Council Member Fagley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Kevin on that 3B for the 600 amp down to 400 amp because we're not putting in air conditioning right now. What happens in the future if we add air conditioning then? Well, I don't know. That would be an engineering uh, statement to say we need 600. Obviously, the utilities then would have to uh, bring us more power into the building and, hey, we would have a breaker. But uh, at this point, because we don't need air, it doesn't seem to uh, be a driving factor. At this point, 400 amp is all that is needed to drive all those air handlers and the other equipment. So if they do put central air in, it'll be for the whole building or just for the basement area or? Well, that would be up to the council because you can certainly central air conditioning the whole equipment, which I don't know if that would be necessary, so you could zone it to what might meet some needs. Okay, thank you. Council Member Dockin and then Council Member Nelson to follow. Council Member Dockin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Do we have any better estimate on potentially when the shooting range will open and the auditorium itself will reopen for use? Councilmember Dockin, <coughs> some facts that we do have is that delivery of all the air handling units will arrive January 30. The large one is going to be coming in three parts and going down the shaft that is in the northwest corner. So that is not being built at this point because they need to keep that all open. That process is probably a week to having all those things, all those units, all three of them hooked up. Um, somewhere in there, if you can help me, Charlene, there's a February 22 uh, date and I can't remember what it does, but it's like the major completion date is somewhere around that. I think we anticipate substantial completion by the end of February, ideally, but, um, you know, it, a lot depends on those air handlers arriving and then being installed. Thank you. 
Councilmember Nelson. Just a clarification on the statement you made about the doors at the, the you're talking about doors right at the bottom of the stairs. So would you just clarify what the what will <coughs> actually be used in the lower level? Once it's done? Well, we don't anticipate ever using the lower level again for any children's activity. But it is a maintenance room with all sorts of uh, connecting points for the air handlers and we just don't feel that it should be remained open. Right now, you could walk 100 feet from the bottom of the stairs straight east, past both handling units and other equipment over and to the left. So we just, we're gonna come with a recommendation to install a door to block that off. <coughs> I thought the original was just gonna take the one side of that big room down there, but you're saying the entire basement then will not be able to be. Uh, there's ductwork going every which way to the units. That side you're talking about is just the air handling yeah, unit itself yeah. marked on the floor there so I don't know what it is it's like 15 by 40 feet or whatever so there will be more mechanical all over that, that room and so it is not going to be used for any uh, community and recreation programs additional discussion hearing none roll call council member Christensen aye Plowman? Aye. Nelson? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Amon? Aye. Dockin? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Fagerly? Aye. Eight ayes, zero nays. <coughs> the resolution passes. Next item on the agenda is a request to purchase and replace an international truck with sto snow removal equipment. Public Works Director Christensen? Thank you, Mayor, members of Council. Uh, per the Equipment purchase policy <coughs> and in the capital improvement plan that's been uh, approved for multiple years on this particular item, the uh, you have before you request to purchase and replace uh, an, an current international truck with snow plow removal equipment. Recommended action by staff, of course, is to approve this purchase and uh, because we got about a six to nine month waiting period on, on getting this piece of equipment. Total cost for the equipment is $164,000. $589.72. Uh, as you can see before you, $78,812.72 from Assel Ford International for the truck only through a state contract number 052445, $85,777 from Towmaster Inc. for the plow, the dump body, warning lights, hydraulic system through a different state contract uh, number 77941. Assel Ford International will be credited will credit, I sh it should say actually, 26000 for the trade of the truck on that, on that state contract. The current truck, the trade in, trade in truck is a 2005 International 7400 dump truck. Unit has 5,600 hours of performed maintenance and also has engine and turbo system problems, broken leaf springs, starting issues. Um, alternatives, of course, are to keep this truck and uh, continue to um, to uh, additional maintenance on it. The financial considerations for this particular item in the 2015 capital outlay program, we included $170,000 for the purchase of the truck and the additional equipment. And the additional comments is an objective down there to reduce annual maintenance on uh, equipment costs for the city of Wilmer. Okay, council. Move to approve. Second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve discussion. Councilmember Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a question on the trade-in. We, we look at $164,000. Is that after the trade-in has been taken off, or how, how does the $26,000 enter into this? Uh, Mayor, members of the council, uh, Councilmember Anderson, I'm glad you asked because I asked the same question uh, right before we came here. The uh, 26000 will be credited after that 165000 will be spent. Um, that $26,000 credit will be used for taxes, licenses, and things of that nature on the truck itself. Okay. Thank you. Council Member Christensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just to remind staff uh, for future purchases, the policy that we changed last year, I believe it was, was to uh, uh, any purchase over $10,000 was to go to the appropriate committee and then the council. Thank you. <coughs> Additional discussion? Council Member Tagerly. I'll get there. Yeah. Work with me. 
Um, for Sean, is this gas or is this diesel? Um, I believe they're all diesel. They're diesel? Yes, sir. All right. Thanks. Council Member Amon. Oh, thank you, Mr. Spring. And this is a, a slightly different from the other truck uh, because there's room for passenger seats. Is that correct? Uh, Mayor, members of council, there is, uh, I believe in all of them, there's a one passenger seat, you know, not including the console, I guess, that would have all the equipment on it. Okay, there's not extender air ride seats on both sides. Uh, may, Mayor, members of council, I believe that it's just the air ride on the one side. Just on one side. All right, thank you. Additional discussion? Sheen hearing none. Roll call. Council Member Plowman. Aye. Nelson. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Amon. Aye. Dockin. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Fagerly. Aye. Christensen. Aye. Eight ayes, zero nays. The resolution passes. Next, we have consideration of a petition for partial street vacation. City Administrator Stevens. Yes, Mayor and Council, the uh, city has received a request for the, a petition for the vacation of one block of 3rd Street Southwest between Trot Avenue and Minnesota Avenue. It was filed by Rice Memorial Hospital and Shared Health Services, LLC. The street has been closed to through traffic for over 10 plus years, and this has been before the Planning Commission, but it is required that the City Council conduct a hearing, and it is the recommendation of staff that you set the hearing for February 17th, 2015. Move to approve, Mr. Mayor. Motion has been made to approve. Is there a second? Second. second. Motion has been made and seconded. Discussion? Question. Mr. Mayor. Member Amon. Uh, shared Health Resources, is that the other building across from Family Practice? I think Shared Health Resource, Resources, if I am um, correct, Council Member Amon, I think is actually a partnership between Rice, Health, Rice uh, Hospital and Family Practice. Thank you. Additional discussion? Seen and hearing none, I'll move to ex adopt the resolution setting the public hearing for February 17th, 2015. Roll call. Council Member Nelson. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Amon. Aye. Dockin. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Fagerly. Aye. Christensen. Aye. Plowman. Aye. Eight ayes, zero nays. Resolution passes. Next on the agenda, we have some old business, uh, the designation of local newspaper. Charlene Stevens? Uh, yes, at the council reorganization meeting of January 12th, there were a number of questions regarding uh, the designation of the West Central Tribune as the official newspaper for the city publications, specifically kind of re uh, regarding their, the, uh, the, uh, a requirement that they have a 75% penetration rate. The city did receive some additional information from West Central Tribune, and the city attorney uh, reviewed that as well, and the city attorney can kind of can speak to that. But the West Central Tribune did provide information that their uh, household penetration is 55%. However, it's the opinion of the city attorney, and he'll explain that further, that the 75% uh, root portion of the statute does not apply in this case, and I would ask the city, and I, and I would ask you to have the city attorney explain that more clearly. Uh, would you please address that? Certainly, Mayor, members of the council. Um, the city Administrator did forward to me a letter that the West Central Tribune sent. The letter, I believe, asserted that they have a 55% circulation rate within the city, and then asserted that the 75% rate that is in the statute does not apply to them. And I reviewed the statute after looking at the letter and determined that is correct. And I can kind of walk you through how this works a little bit. The statute 331A.02, for your reference, uh, sets forth a number of requirements for a newspaper to meet to be a qualified newspaper. And they're mostly dealing with format, the language it has to be in. Um, it does include, among those requirements, a fairly minimal circulation, minimum circulation rate of 400 households within the political subdivision. Um, it does not require circulation to exceed 75%. There's then a different section of the same uh, chapter of statutes that it sets forth a priority. So if there are more than one qualified newspapers in or near a jurisdiction, you have to follow the order of priorities and how you designate your newspaper. And the first priority is if there is a qualified newspaper within the city limits of your city, uh, you must designate it. If there are more than one, you have to designate one of them. But in Wilmer's case, my understanding is there is just one. 
So that statute operates to require the city to designate the West Central Tribune. Where the 75% circulation threshold comes in is there is then an exception in the statute that says you don't have to follow our required order of priorities in the rare event that there is a different newspaper out there that also covers your local government that among other things has at least a 75% circulation within your city. Um, so that's how that 75% requirement comes into play. It is not applicable to the West Central Tribune because they weren't designated as the official paper um, as an exception to that required order of priorities. It was designated because of that order of priorities. So it just it is, it doesn't apply to them. I know that might sound complicated, so I'm happy to try and answer any questions anyone might have about it. Okay. Any discussion? Questions? Councilmember Christensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> the uh, local newspaper also has a weekly called the Wilmer Reminder. Um, I think it's separate from the Tribune, and I, I don't know if rates are less expensive in it or not, but, but would that be an option? It comes out every Saturday. It's called the, the Wilmer Reminder, and it's, it's in addition to the uh, Saturday's paper. Um, again, I don't know what the rates are on there, but if they're less expensive, it might be looking, worth looking into. Um, Councilmember Christensen, I don't know if that, would, if that is technically a qualified newspaper or not. I had been informed that there was only one qualified newspaper in the city. I would have to investigate that, and at this point, we'd be looking at that for at, least, at the earliest point you could do it would be the next year. But okay, if that's you. something the council wants me to look into, certainly I'd be happy to do that. I'll look into it. Okay. Mayor. Other discussion? Uh, council Member Nelson. Is there some way that we can put this on record now so we don't have to do this every year? How much money did we spend in the taxpayers' money to, to research this and we did it the last time? I, I, is there some place we can put it on file so that we don't have to go through this again? Councilmember Nelson, the reason I asked us to maybe take it the next step uh, and have the city uh, attorney look at it uh, was for that reason, so that we can have that on record so that when this comes up in our next reorganizational meeting, we can talk about it, we can draw this information forward, we can have that as background documentation so that then we won't have to go through that again. I think that. We've been very thorough in our process. I think it clearly states that the West Central Tribune does meet that. Um, and so I, I, I'm comfortable with it at this point. And I guess if the council would like some further action, we can certainly do that. But I would certainly ask staff to bring that back to us at the next reorganizational meeting so that we do have this documentation. Um, you know, we had three council members that brought it up. I mean, it wasn't just one council member. So I felt it was important that we get an answer to the question. And I do agree with you that it's been brought up numerous times. Kevin, how many times do you know how many times it's brought up? I can think of two times at least before this. So That's all we find on the record. So on the record, there's officially two other times this has been discussed the same issue. And then it came up again this year, so it's a total of three times it's been brought before us. So my, my intent to have the additional work done was to try to put it to bed. But then again, I mean, if we had one council member bringing it up, it would be an issue. But we had three council meet members at the last meeting bring it up. I, mean, I think it's just fine as long as we don't do it. It's like repeating it, and we're spending the money to do the same thing we've done three times now. So I think our minutes would reflect the same discussion the last time. So that's my question. And, um, and I will ask staff at the next reorganizational meeting that we bring this forward, this, this information, so that we have it. So, and I do agree with you. I mean, we spent taxpayer dollars to research this. And I believe probably the last two times we probably spent taxpayer dollars too to get the same answer. So. Mr. Mayor. Yep. Uh, Council Member Amon. Thank I was one of those three that asked. And uh, <clears throat> I guess my reasoning for that, uh, I understand that uh, the circulation of, of papers uh, have a third party that uh, do the audits, you might say, and uh, of what the readership is in the community. Uh, for any given community. It's an independent audit that they subscribe to so they can tell their uh, people they're selling their advertising to uh, what their circulation number is. Um, my concern uh, was not necessarily the West Central Tribune at all as far as being the primary newspaper. My issue was are we getting the word out to the people? 
And when the 75% rule uh, issue came into play, we needed clarification on it. I think I'm glad I'm very comfortable with the answer. But I, again, as I previously, at last meeting, Mr. Mayor and Council, uh, how are we reaching the other uh, 3,600 people if there's 8,000 people in the community? If we're only reaching 55, can we do better? And that's something we need to work on. That was the primary reason for uh, the inquiry of this, uh, of the West Central Tribune's information and the readership. Sure. Thank you. And I think that um, what I would ask staff to do for the next reorganizational meeting uh, is to actually have this uh, percentage of saturation for the next meeting so that when we bring it forward, we actually know that number. We can certainly do that, Mr. Mayor. Other discussion? Okay. Next item on the agenda is a request from Council Member Amon at the last meeting to uh, make some comments to the, uh, to the Council. Um, so I'll just introduce it that way, Council Member Amon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Um, as you know, I'm not silent. <laughs> and um, I, I had uh, requested or sent this information out to everybody, and uh, it's, it's impossible for me to speak personally to each, every, each and every council person on some thoughts I have because I'd be in violation of the open meeting law. So the only way this can be done is by open dialogue at, at, the, uh, at this type of a setting. Um, as I said, as, as another year slips by and the new year approaches, I feel compelled to list some items that we, the mayor, city, and council may consider or discuss to help establish our goals and objectives. The following are just some of my thoughts to stimulate discussion and action between us. And, and you've read those, but um, one thing that I did um, uh, w would like to, uh, some thought on is uh, uh, the, number four, which has uh, have each committee together with appropriate staff to be develop an annual goal and priority list at the beginning of each calendar year along with the anticipated time frame and the approximate cost to complete. Uh, the reason for that is we've been accused of not uh, setting our goals and our priorities and we uh, at the last to retreat uh, did not accomplish that task and um, I w I'm just trying to stimulate that process. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you mentioned earlier that you're going to have, you're in favor of having a retreat that's going to be put on our agenda for the next Labor Relations Committee meeting coming up Wednesday. Uh, and the other uh, one issue is uh, re request each council person to submit an annual list of priorities, goals, and objectives uh, that they would like the council to discuss or take action on. That isn't mandatory, but sometimes as a group, we can do this in a setting and pay a retreat facilitator many thousands of dollars, or we can just take a piece of paper and write down our thoughts. And it would probably help, uh, my, my reason is it would probably help the facilitator, whoever is going to do this, if you knew each individual and what some of their issues are that they want to talk about, this may save us some time as far as uh, the length of time that we have to hire a facilitator to uh, set our priorities and our goals. Anyway, um, in the end of my uh, comment, I just said as one of eight, as one of eight council people, uh, I nor any other one council person can make change together through open discussion and offering alternatives versus slam dunking an idea. Progress can, can be made, and I look forward to working with you to discuss my ideas and your ideas also. Happy New Year. Uh, thank you for your time, Mr. Mayor and the council. I'll be glad to talk with anybody anytime. Thank you. Councilmember Rahman, what I'd like to do with this is that um, to give it to the city administrator to have her work with our facilitator uh, when we are going to do our retreat and just have that be maybe a jumping off point, something we can talk about there. So are you okay if we do that? That's fine. Okay. So that would be what I would recommend us doing. Um, Councilmember, uh, city administrator Stevens, you understand? Yep, I do. Thank you. Okay, thanks. We can do that. Okay. Uh, update on Vision 2040. Uh, City Administrator Stevens. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. A couple items I would like to give an update on for Vision 2040. Um, you had asked for an update. A couple items I'd like to kind of draw the Council's attention to and the public's attention to is tomorrow evening, uh, Wednesday, January 21st, from 6 to 8.30 at the Wilmer Middle School in the cafeteria. There will be an event um, entitled Cross-Cultural Conversation for Community Engagement. And I know that's kind of a long title and a bit of a mouthful. 
but it is um, a workshop that is geared around building skills for talking with others across uh, cultural boundaries, enhancing skills for deeper listening to others, and to learn a practical model for cross-cultural conversation in, in an interfaith community. And the Vision 20, Wilmer Lakes Area Vision 2040 is a sponsor of this, as is the Wilmer Lakes Area Chamber. Uh, Wilmer Community Ed and Recreation as well is sponsoring it, is facilitated by the Reverend Ron Duty, who is a PhD and a, a retired pastor. Um, he has done this uh, workshop in a number of other communities. Um, some of those communities um, are in Minnesota, and some of them are outside of, of Minnesota, such as Atlanta and Nashville and Savannah. And uh, we think it's going to be a very good event. There's no fee to attend. It's open to anybody who wishes to participate. You don't even have to pre-register, and so we would hope to see individuals there. And then I'd also like to um, highlight our Leadership 2040 uh, program, which kicked off two weeks ago in the f January 9th. Um, this is a leadership class, an intensive leadership class that was developed uh, by a group of volunteers and was really geared to um, increase leadership development opportunities in our community, something that was identified as part of the Vision 2040 uh, goals. And we have been working with the University of Minnesota Extension's uh, Center for Community Vitality in developing the curriculum. We kicked off the class with 29 um, uh, individuals. Our maximum cutoff was 30, so we feel very good about that. Feel very good about the individuals in the class, a very balanced class. A couple of uh, Council Member Nelson is actually a participant in the class, and Chief Felt is a participant in the class, and there's a good mix of individuals from uh, government and from the private sector, from nonprofit organizations, and from within the city of Wilmer, and then from within Candy, Ohio County. And it is a, six sessions. It'll go through May with graduation in, in uh, I'm sorry, graduation will occur in June. And then we were also working on a program uh, that will start up again, a, another opportunity for this class in September of this year's, and it was really geared to be um, hearing a lot of feedback from the Chamber's leadership perspectives being a good kind of uh, introductory experience to leadership, and this being a little bit more intensive and an opportunity for individuals. And so those are a couple of the programs I would like to highlight for you. I'd be Thank happy you. to answer any questions. Does any uh, council members have any questions about the Vision 2040 process? Councilmember Amon. Budget, financially. I know they were requesting some more money uh, currently. Um, the budget, um, many of these programs are funded. There was grant funding that was received from the Wilmer Area Community Foundation. The uh, Vision 2040 received $25,000 grant from the Wilmer Area Community Foundation. Approximately 10000 of that went to the Leadership 2040. And uh, the other two programs uh, being sponsored, I'm drawing a blank on, and I'm looking towards uh, Ken Warner, who's in the back, if he can <laughs> highlight the two programs for me. Uh, but there were two additional programs uh, that were sponsored by that, and then the uh, community stakeholders have been asked to put in an addition, um, some additional funds, and I think that number was 2,500 for those initial for those community stakeholders. And other fundraising has occurred by the individual groups themselves. Thank you. Okay. Councilmember Nelson. Some of that money, I think, is going towards a house, possibly going to the housing study. And possibly a housing study, and some of it was also, I, as I now recall, to support some of the movies in the park. Yeah, just a small amount with yeah. that. Thank you. I was thinking there was another one, but I don't remember. Okay. Additional comments? Could somebody explain? Um, there's Mr. a lot Mr. of. Raman? I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. Didn't get recognized. Thank you for correcting me. <laughs> we're trying. Yeah, we're working. I couldn't uh, get Councilmember Fagley's name earlier, so I was going <laughs> to I was going to turn it around. But we're all working together here. So um, there's been a lot of discussion. I've attended a few of the meetings on the uh, on 2040 on uh, housing, the housing issue, and the word uh, workforce housing has come up several several times in the newspaper. And I'm just wondering what, how can you define workforce housing? And what is the goal? Uh, what are they trying to accomplish? And could you please define workforce housing? I'm not certain what? that I can define that. There is a group working on workforce housing, um, and um, I'm not involved intimately with that group, so I would defer to to the leadership of that group. And Jill Bankston was one of those individuals <coughs> who was here, and she has left, but I can get that information and provide it to council at another time. Council Member Allen, maybe if it would be okay with you, we could actually have a brief report on that at our next council meeting to actually define what that is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of my goals is to keep Vision 2040 in front of us. And uh, right. that would be a good segue to bring that back in front of us. So, Council Member Nelson. I am part of that group, but I would encourage people, the League of Minnesota Cities has a workforce housing 
um, information on their website. I believe the legislature is also looking at funding for workforce housing. So there's a lot of information out there um, with regard to that. Um, and, um, you know, I think it's available um, just to research and the, and the minutes from the, those meetings are out on the 2040 website too, so. Certainly. Uh, my question to you, Council Member Nelson, on that would be, are, are we gonna have a local definition of that? And I mean, I guess I'd kind of like to bring it to the next meeting, but I mean, if you wanna answer that, um, that's fine, but. Um, I don't know that that group is that far to say that there's a local definition. We did a tour of the housing in Wilmer. Um, we've done some research on what's going on in, in other communities. Um, and workforce housing is not necessarily subsidized housing. It is housing of, and um, there are different projects going on in other communities. Marshall, um, um, I'm trying to think of some of the others. We talked about Mankato. Um, there's just a lot of information being gathered right now. And the one thing they did come up with is that we need to have a new housing study done. The one that, that had been done is outdated. And so that was part of what we were looking at. And I think I haven't been at the last um, meeting, but I think they're looking at RFPs for a housing study um, through with HRA and some additional information. So, okay, thank you. I know um, Doug Fenster is one of our local realtors, and uh, he and I had a conversation. Man, that's going to be a month ago now, isn't it, Doug? Um, and so we actually talked about that. And I was surprised when you start talking about that workforce housing. At what level you're really talking? I mean. When I had my initial conversation, I mean, I thought we were talking, I think I told you 75, 85,000, maybe top side of 100. And uh, I was quickly educated that I was incorrect. So we have a lot of learning to do. So thanks for bringing that up. So um, I'm sorry, Council Member Amon. Well, if I could just, since we're on the subject briefly, I'm, workforce housing, I associate that with, uh, with the, if the state's going to be involved and they're talking about it, Ms. Nelson, at, at the state level. Uh, in other words, uh, it's going to be federal or state funding. So taxpayers' money is going to be used to build workforce housing. That's what I interpret that as. And I, I guess what I'm understanding, there's different terminologies uh, on, on how you interpret, how, what do you interpret workforce housing to be? Is it uh, employer-owned? Do the employers that need uh, sp space uh, for uh, people uh, for workforce housing? Uh, is it low-income housing? Um, or is it this uh, market rate housing? Um, th that's a big difference. So when you say workforce housing, it's like just specifically what what is it we're looking at? Because if we're looking at an issue of uh, using uh, uh, state and federal funds, that means and also not, there will be an obligation from the city to require maintenance of those streets and everything else in front of it. So that's a financial obligation on our behalf too. And I'm just concerned how that's going to be affected how we're going to be affected by it. Thank you. You know, the more I'm hearing about this conversation, this might be better to start at the retreat and then bring back at another time. It's kind of how it's sounding to me. So, okay. Council Member Nelson, I had asked if you wanted to make a presentation on the uh, project that we sat in on on Thursday. I think uh, it's a tremendous opportunity of another thing happening in Vision 2040. Were you prepared to do that? I am not prepared to do a presentation per se, but there, um, it's called Work Up, that is, and it's uh, occurring out at the, um, um, out on the campus of, in, of uh, Novatech, Midwest, campus. Midwest campus, thank you. Um, there will be an opportunity to do some tours out there. Betsy Bonema is working on that, and it's very exciting to take a look at um, space for individual people to work from, um, those types of things. And I had asked you, you were at that meeting also, um, I thought it might be a good opportunity for the council to have a tour. Um, they're not ready to go yet, and they, um, while the website is up and running, there is not actually handout information. and so be happy to bring back additional information in the future um, for that. But um, I do think that's an exciting project that's going on and uh, should be interesting to follow. And I, I think it's a short time frame. Does anybody remember March, maybe, yep. that they're looking at? So um, maybe something that we can talk about again. Thank you. Thank you for those updates on Vision 2040. Again, uh, I think that uh, this, uh, that I would like to keep that in front of the council. Um, and so if you have comments on that, let me know. Um, Chief Hendrickson, if you could give us a couple of comments on the gas leak, I know that uh, uh, those can be some uh, very harrowing experiences for the fire service having come from there. So, Chief Hendrickson. 
Mayor Kelvin and uh, members of council, uh, on January 15th at 4.14 in the morning, Wilmer PD was called to a personal injury accident involving a single vehicle um, that uh, at that time they just figured it was an accident. Upon arrival, Wilmer PD investigated and found that it did hit a gas line. Uh, consequently, the fire department was dispatched at 4.16 in the morning. Um, upon arrival, myself and uh, Deputy Chief Gilbertson investigated and found that um, a gas supply header with two high pressure lines that feed it uh, at 95 PSI um, had been hit and continued to leak uh, gas at a high rate. Um, it kind of sounded like a jet engine basically. Um, so we uh, only had to evacuate one house that was immediately adjacent to that. Um, for those that are interested, it's uh, right in the parking lot, basically a first reformed church in the cemetery that's adjacent to that. Um, Mini Gasco arrived about 45 minutes later um, and uh, thought they were going to be able to shut it off, unfortunately, due to the damage. Um, it continued on uh, for the next day and a half, as uh, many uh, Wilmer residents know, based on the high traffic volume on 15th Street Southwest. Um, so there were no injuries to firefighters or civilians. Um, it has been um, put back into service. Um, it'll probably, um, they have a temporary uh, high pressure line there now, and they will have uh, further maintenance as they rebuild that back in the metro and then ship it back out. Thank you for that report, uh, thorough report. I appreciate that. Um, also want to thank you and your staff, also the uh, uh, Police Department and their response, along with the uh, ambulance service. I know you guys work well together, so thank you for your dedication to our community. Uh, we've seen some of that tonight with the uh, number of firefighters here. It's very encouraging to see the support you have, Chief Hendrickson. So keep up the good work. So thank you, sir. Council, have any questions? Okay, hearing none. Announcement of council committee meeting dates. Finance, Mr. Mayor. Finance committee will not meet. No meeting for finance. Uh, public works, public safety. Mr. Mayor, we'll meet Tuesday the 27th at 4.45 p.m. Community development. No meeting, Mr. Mayor. Council Member Amon, labor? Uh, labor at 28th, Wednesday, 4.45. Is that not gonna work? Uh, Mr. Amon, I, I will not be available for that meeting. I would prefer that we defer it to, to the following, to the next two weeks. All right, then we'll, um, in the future, can we make sure that every two weeks, uh, or the week preceding the city council meeting, that that date's available as a regular schedule? I would, I would like to have that. Yep. Sure. Okay. So those are the committee uh, meeting dates. Anything else for the good of the order, for the good of the community? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. We are adjourned. <laughs>